Hi, I'm Phil Steele, and today we're going to look at Luminar. Luminar is a photo editing program, and we're going to consider three different use cases for it. First, as a standalone program for improving the look of your photos. Second, as a companion product to use alongside Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop to get extra functions that you don't get in those programs. And finally, we'll consider Luminar as a potential replacement for Lightroom. All right, at the time I'm recording this, Luminar has just released version 4.2. So this video is going to be an update of my earlier video where I reviewed Luminar 3 in depth. But I want to bring you up to date now with the new features that have been added to Luminar 4. So what I'll do in this video is cover everything. I'll start by including my earlier review of Luminar 3 because all that stuff is still in the software and it gives you a basic overview of how Luminar works. And then toward the middle or end of this video, I'll show you the new features in Luminar 4, which honestly are pretty mind-blowing. These guys are really changing the way photo editing works. And of course, I'll put a link down below where you can buy Luminar at a discounted price. Now, Luminar is mainly designed to quickly improve the appearance of your photos. And as you can see, if I click on the Edit tab up here at the top, you'll find a panel very similar to what you find in the develop module of Lightroom with sliders to adjust the exposure, the color, etc. of your photos. But what Luminar is really famous for, and the feature that I enjoy the most, is what they call their AI filters. AI meaning artificial intelligence. Now, I don't know what's actually going on behind the scenes with these filters, but they do seem pretty intelligent for adjusting your photos. Now you see the very first one here is called Accent AI filter. That's just their general make it better filter. And you can see as I slide the slider up, what it does to the photo is actually pretty impressive. I'll take it down and up again, down, up again. That's actually a pretty smart improvement. And you can see right below that there's one called AI sky enhancer. And I'll slide that one up and you can see what it does to the sky. If I bring it down, bring it up, bring it down, bring it up. That's actually also a pretty smart improvement. And this is what I like best about Luminar. I found that about 90% of my photos can be improved in just a few seconds with these quick filters. Now, of course, Luminar also allows you to really get into all the details. You can see if I click on this Add Filter button here, you can access all kinds of sophisticated effects, including many things that you can't even find in Lightroom, including the ability to use layers, as you can see right here. And we'll talk about that. But I wanted to emphasize at first these AI filters just because that's where you really get your big bang for the buck in Luminar, and that's really what saves me a lot of time. Now the other thing that Luminar is famous for is what they call Luminar Looks. These are what you would call presets in Lightroom. And down here you can see a little row of previews at the bottom for the currently selected batch of looks. And you can see that I currently have selected a batch called Landscape. And these came automatically included with Luminar. And if I click on each one of these little thumbnails, you can see as it applies that look to the photo, how it changes the appearance of it instantly. I'll just go through this set of them to kind of give you a feel for what that's kind of cool. I like that look. This little uh, collection here does. There's always a black and white, you know, fog, mystic, sunset. And if, if it appears too strong, here's one of the nice things. Every look has a little slider that you can adjust the intensity. You can take it all the way back to zero or just dial it into whatever level. Obviously, that's too much at the high end, but maybe that sunset thing works at about uh, halfway. Now you can see here where it says landscape, there's a little arrow and that means I can click on this to open up this panel to switch to a different set of looks or presets. And you can see they have several that come bundled in. There's essentials, street photography looks, landscape, portrait, lifestyle, dramatic, and others. But the important thing here is this one that says get more. So if I click on that, it takes you to the Luminar website where you can look 
through a whole bunch of additional collections that you can download. In fact, I'll click on this tab here called Looks and you can see there's quite a lot of them. Now some of them are free and some of them are premium look sets that were created by photographers that you can buy. So you can see here, you know, this set is free. This set costs $9.99. It was created by some photographer. And actually Luminar has asked me to create a set of favorite looks of mine that they could add to this collection, but I haven't got around to that yet. Maybe I will one day. Anyway, you can see if I scroll down, there's a lot of different kind of looks here and there's pages and pages of them and I'm assuming they're just going to keep cranking out more and more and more. And I've downloaded some of the free ones and you can download free or pay for them. It's really nice to have this huge collection of stuff that you can just keep adding and adding to give yourself more options. I downloaded this set called Tonality from the website for free and they were very easy to install. When I downloaded them, they just installed themselves right into the program. It didn't take much work. Now let me do another landscape for you just to show you how quickly you can fix photos like this. This is straight out of camera. These are all photos that I shot in Japan. And obviously the first thing I'm going to do is what I did before. I'm going to go to that Accent AI filter and just turn that up. And look what a huge improvement that makes. Before, after, before, after. I mean, the photo is basically fixed. But I'm going to also see what I could do with the sky, with the sky enhancer. But I think if I push that all the way up, you start to see some JPEGy kind of banding in the sky. So I think uh, I don't want to go that high. I'm going to leave that, leave that a bit lower. So that already looks great. But maybe I want to bring up the shadow areas a bit more. So in this case, because the, uh, the develop filter is not showing over here, I'm just going to click on add filter bring in the develop filter which gives me these controls that we're used to similar to what you see in Lightroom. I'm going to push up the shadows and I like that better. And if I wanted to bring up the vibrance to make it even more colorful I could do that but that's kind of pushing the limits. And then of course if I wanted to go down into the, the looks panel at the bottom I could start trying some different landscape looks but I think this is already a pretty intense photo and so I think uh, those may be a little over the top. But you can see how quickly, within a couple of seconds, I just instantly improved this thing. All right, let's try a different category down here in the looks. I'm going to switch to the street photography category. And I want to find a photo that's more suitable to that. So I'm going to pick this, which is an actual candid street photo from Japan. And I'm just going to flip through these looks just to see what we've got down here. I, I kind of like that. It's a, you know, a vintage film kind of look. This one's called Big City. And again, if you like the feel of something but think it's overdone, you can just dial it back to the level where you want it. Soft colors, that's interesting. Subway, again, too intense, but if you dial it back, it might work. And super faded, maybe a little too faded. I'll bring it back a little. So I like the fact that they have a lot of things that seem like they'd work really well with a lot of different styles of street photography. Now just for fun, I'll do one more. I'll switch over to the portrait category of looks and I need to find a photo that's more suited to that subject matter. And this one's kind of like a portrait. So let's see what we can do here. Now first of all, I usually try the AI filter and I like what that does. You can see it just it brought, up, brought up the shadows. It warmed it up a little bit. I just like it in general. That's pretty good. And you notice the AI sky enhancer is grayed out because there's no sky in this photo and it's smart enough to know that. So that's a little improvement, but let me try these looks down here and see, see what they've got. Now that's interesting. Female portrait softens and gives sort of a peachy tone to everything. Male portrait, you can see the skin is a lot harsher. Compare female portrait there to male portrait there. You know, yeah, you don't want to do this to your ladies. Matte portrait, uh, again, too much, but it might be cool if it was dialed down. Noir, interesting. And smooth portrait, I actually like that one a lot. And I think full strength, that's an improvement. So let's see, between the AI filter and the smooth portrait look, uh, all that combined, I can see the effect of all of that. You can see there's a slider at the bottom of the panel that controls everything you've done. Whatever kind of filter stack you have going, you can take it back to zero. There's the before, there's the after, before, after. I think it's a definite improvement. 
Now I'm going to show you something Luminar can do that you can't do in Lightroom. Here's a cool photo in a bamboo forest, and I picked this one because it has the sun in it. I'm going to show you a filter called Sun Rays. Where is Sun Rays? There it is. Now you can see what it did. It dropped in an artificial sun, and it doesn't know where it ought to be, but you can move it. So you can see it popped it in over here, but I'm going to move it over where the real sun is so it looks like it makes sense. So there's an X and Y coordinate slider. You can just drag it to the position where you want it. You can see it looks how it looks as it's moving around. And I kind of I'll put it right there where the real sun is. And now you can see we've got these sun rays. And you can control all kinds of things about the rays and how strong they are and all that stuff. But I think this is cool. Now this kind of effect can be overdone if you're not careful. It can look pretty corny. And I think, you know, some people have abused this, but I think done tastefully, this is a really fun filter to have and it's something you can't do in Lightroom. I'm going to show you one more unusual filter that I kind of like. I'm going to click on the Add Filter button. I'm going to pick the one called Orton Effect. And it doesn't apply it when you uh, click on it. It waits until you move the slider up so you can see it being applied. So I'm going to push the Amount slider up. It's difficult to describe what this does. It's a combination of sharpness and softness at the same time. And obviously it increases saturation too. And you can control parameters like the softness and the brightness and other things. I like this for certain kinds of subject matter and I think it kind of works on this dreamy golden temple that we have right here. So that's an unusual filter that I haven't seen elsewhere and I kind of like it. All right, so I think you get the idea that Luminar can make some pretty cool global adjustments to your photos very quickly. But it's also a very powerful detail editor. When I add a new layer in Luminar by clicking right here, I'm going to make a new adjustment layer. I get an adjustment brush like what you get in Lightroom that I can paint in the image with. And you also see I can create radio masks and gradient masks just like I can in Lightroom. But I'm going to use the brush. I'm going to add a filter. Uh, let's see, I think I'll do the uh, golden hour effect for the golden temple, why not? And I'll push it up a little bit so you can see it makes things more golden. And uh, I think it kind of overdoes, uh, it overdoes the greenery, but I kind of like the effect on the temple. So let's say I would just want to paint it on the temple only and leave the trees and the rest of it alone. So I'll just put it here midway and I'll take the brush, oops, click on my brush, and I'll go in here and I'm just going to paint the effect on the temple and you can see it's leaving the trees and everything else alone. And I'm not going to do this carefully like I would if I was doing this for real because um, I you know, need to do this quickly for you. But you can see I created effectively a layer mask where it's only applying that effect to the temple. And because it's on a layer of its own, I could turn that layer on or off and see the effect either applied or not applied. And I can also change the blend mode of the layer just like what you could do in Photoshop. And one, with the effect applied, I can control the strength of that layer, just like you can do in Photoshop. So these are the kind of edits that we're used to having to go into Photoshop to do, but we can do it all right within Luminar. It's really very powerful. All right, now let's look at some pretty amazing features that were added in the new Luminar 4. The first of these features is called AI Sky Replacement. So here you can see I have a photo of a temple that I took in Japan. It's uh, not bad, but the sky is really incredibly boring. So let's replace that sky. And the way we do that, we go to this palette called the Creative Palette here. And you can see the very first item on it is called AI Sky Replacement. And you drop down the little sky selection menu. You can see we have a bunch of skies to choose from here. Now these are built in, but you're not limited to the built-in skies that they have. You can import any JPEG photo of a sky that you've ever taken, or you can buy collections of skies. But I'm going to work with the ones they have built in here. I'm just going to pick something at random and see how it looks. And that one, that looks pretty darn good actually. The lighting in that one actually goes just fine with my scene. So that was a, a random lucky choice. Let's look at some more. I'll pick uh, one of these dramatic skies. That one, I don't really like the way the color and the light in that one looks with my scene. I'll try a different dramatic sky. Yeah, it's not bad. I'll uh, just try a few more here. Dramatic sunset number four. And I kind of, I like the look of that, but again, I think something about the position of the sun doesn't look, uh, well, that's number five quite right. Let's try number four. 
that's better but again I don't think I quite like the Sun so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go back to that first one I picked which uh, which actually worked pretty well I mean that looks believable to me with the lighting on this scene and what an incredible difference from my original let's see if I uh, turn that on and off there's without there is with I mean what a difference so now let's look at the second new sky feature that they have put in Luminar 4. And this one just came out in version 4.2, the latest update, 4.2 update of Luminar. This is called AI Augmented Sky, and I'm going to open up that in the panel here. Now what this does is it allows you to add objects to the sky. So let's, uh, you can see we can put in balloons or birds or clouds or fireworks or the moon or mountains. Uh, let's just try some birds first. I'll just pick something in random here. Birds number two. That looks pretty believable. There's birds went right in there. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, uh, I don't think I'll do fireworks because it's daytime and that would look pretty weird. Well, I'll try it just for the heck of it, just see how weird it looks. And uh, I think uh, position, how do we position, place the object. Yeah, as I thought, that looks pretty weird uh, in the daytime, so I'm not going to leave the fireworks there. Let's try the moon. <laughs> yeah, now we're in Peter Lick territory here. It looks pretty cool, but uh, not very uh, not very believable. But I can see how you could do some cool things with that. You know, if you if you had the right photo and you know you scaled the moon to an appropriate size. Anyway, you get the idea. You could do some fun stuff with that, but I don't think that's right for, for this photo. So let's, uh, let's see. I don't know what the planes are. Uh, I can see where this is going. <laughs> you want a plane flying over your temple? Again, I don't think that's right for this photo. Uh, let's try mountains. Ah, now, now we're in business. I kind of like that, and that dropped in, eh, dropped in just about the right place and everything I'm not even I'm not even gonna mess with it I think it sort of works with the sky it sort of works with the temple and now instead of Japan it looks a little more like I'm in, in Nepal but uh, it's still pretty amazing let me let me turn on and off before after so you can see Luminar is giving you the ability to do some things with just the click of a mouse that if you were working in Photoshop would take you hours of masking out every one of these little leaves and trees and all this complex mask creating to get these things perfectly blended in and Luminar is making those masks and just dropping it in there in a drag and drop way. So I find this pretty astonishing. Now obviously some people might think this is cheating. Well they're free to not do it and others might think it looks tacky and you could certainly create some tacky looking things with this and I'm sure plenty of people will but that applies to all of photography. If you use these tools with a good eye and a good sense of taste, you could probably create some amazing things. All right, the other new feature that is very impressive in Luminar 4 is what they call their Portrait and Skin Enhancer. And you can find these tools under this little smiley face thing called Portrait here in the palettes. And the first thing we're gonna do is look at the AI Skin Enhancer, which is sort of a one-click retouching to replace what you would otherwise do in Lightroom or Photoshop that might be very time-consuming. So let's zoom in on Valeria here. She already has great skin, but you can see there's a few little blemishes and things that could be cleaned up. So let's see how well Luminar does it. So the AI Skin Enhancer is just a one-stop slider tool. You push it up and it smooths out the skin. And you can see I'll go all the way up to 100%. It definitely smooths her out. Now there's still a few little spots, but if I check this little checkbox here that says AI skin defects removal, I'll turn that on, and then those little spots disappeared. So I'll turn it off and on once. There with it off, there with it on. And now that I turned it on, I could probably back off this slider a bit because I don't have to I don't have to smooth her out quite as much with that turned on. I could go back to a little more reasonable uh, level on her skin. So that worked very well and very quickly. Now there's also a slider in here called shine removal and she does have a little bit of a hot spot on her skin on her nose and on her face from my light so let's see what happens as we push that up. I'll just take it up all the way. Wow look how that took that hot spot off her nose. I'm gonna go down and back up 
down, back up. Now that's terrific because I would spend a lot of time doing some cloning or something to patch that out in Photoshop and this just did it with a simple one-click slider. Now the other set of tools for working on portraits is what they call the AI Portrait Enhancer, which I'm going to open up right here. Now this is a whole set of tools with sliders that will make a bunch of adjustments automatically. So I'm going to sort of go down the list and see which ones I might need. That doesn't, don't need any red eye removal. Eye whitening, her eyes are already so white. And by the way, this photo was straight out of camera that we started on, so she, she looked great. Uh, I don't think her eyes need to be any whiter. She'd probably just start looking crazy if we do that. Um, I do like this slider called Eye Enhancer, though. What this does, I'll push it all the way up just so you can see the effect. It just pops up the the sharpness and the brightness, the catch lights in the eyes really pop out. I'll take it all the way down, all the way up. See, it just makes the eyes pop a little more. So I actually like that one a lot. Dark circles under the eyes, she doesn't really have it and she's wearing makeup and uh, if I slide that up, you can see what it does, but she doesn't really have dark circles, but some people would benefit a lot from that slider. Um, I'm gonna skip that one for now, improve eyebrows. Really, as far as I can tell, mostly just darkens them. Maybe it, maybe it kind of fills them in too. I'll kind of go to the, the middle on there. Um, her lips, her makeup is perfect. I think if I did anything on her lips, it would just blow it. So, and teeth whitening, she doesn't have any teeth showing in this photo, so that one doesn't apply here. But obviously when you have teeth showing, that one would be great. Now, the one that will be controversial here is this slider called Slim Face. And I'll push it up and you can see it's starting to work here. But because of the angle of her face in this photo, it's kind of strange. I think I should show it on one that, uh, where her face is a little more straight on. So let me, let me flip over to a different photo. So let's try the slim face thing now that we have her face straight on to us. And you'll see what it does. Now, I don't think Valeria needs any changes, but you may find some clients who like you to use that filter on them. And it's going to be a judgment call for you whether you ever think you want to do something like that as a photographer. But like I say, you might have portrait clients who would love it if you slimmed their face down a little bit. So that's about all I can say about that. It's a dangerous tool and it's up to you to use it wisely. Now, I could keep going into these deep features, but that's not the purpose of this video. I just wanted to give you an overview of what Luminar is good at. And there's no need for me to drill down into these features and start showing you how to use them, because you can get all of that information on the Luminar website. Here I am on the Skylum site. That's the company that makes Luminar. You can see under the Luminar tab, if I pick Education, there are dozens of videos here showing you how to do all kinds of things, everything you could ever need to know about using Luminar. And there are page after page of these. Let me click on last here to see how many pages there are. So there's 17 pages of videos about using Luminar already, and it's constantly growing. And some of these are very specific techniques that you might want to use, as you can see here, but also some of them are very general general uh, purpose education, how to get started with it, how to import your photos, how to manage your photos. So it's everything from the most basic get off the ground to the most advanced high tech kind of stuff you can imagine. They've got videos for it right on their site. All right, we've seen the basics of what Luminar does as a standalone program. And I think it's a great photo editor, especially for the price. But now let's look at how you can use Luminar if you're already using Lightroom and or Photoshop. Now, as most of you know, I use both of those Adobe programs. In fact, I have educational courses teaching both of those programs. So I'm a big user of both Lightroom and Photoshop. Well, one cool thing about Luminar is that it's designed to work as a plugin with both Lightroom and Photoshop. So let's take a look at what that means. Here I am in Lightroom and let's say I'm editing a photo and I think, I can handle this one more quickly in Luminar, or I think maybe one of those Luminar looks would be very appropriate for this. All I have to do is go up to the photo menu here and pick edit in, and you can see Luminar appears right there on the menu. If I click that, I always choose edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments because I usually can't remember if I've made any Lightroom edits on it or not. This is what I think is the safe and easy way. I just go edit and it automatically gets opened up in Luminar. 
Now this is kind of a spooky looking photo from a cemetery in Japan and I thought maybe one of these uh, luminar looks in the dramatic category would be suitable to it. You know, that's pretty cool already. Some of these are a little more colorful maybe than I want. That's kind of spooky. That's very spooky. Yeah, noir. Ooh, yeah, I think film noir looks particularly good. And uh, I like it at full strength. So let's say now I'm done editing this in Luminar. I like the way it looks. If I click on Apply, it automatically saves it back into Lightroom. And it appears right here, back in Lightroom. Here it is in my Lightroom film strip. Now the same kind of thing can be done in Photoshop. Here I am in Photoshop with a photo open. In Photoshop you go to the filter menu and you pick Skylum Software, Luminar, and this automatically launches this photo in Luminar. Here it is, and I think I'd like one of these effects that kind of has a little bit of that Orton effect, like maybe this one called Mystic, or this one, or this one. I think I'll go back to Mystic and uh, Maybe dial it back slightly, but let's say over here maybe I want a little more of the Orton effect and maybe I want to push up the vibrance. And when I'm satisfied with the way this looks, I click Apply. And that brings it right back to Photoshop with those changes applied to it. So this is how Luminar works as a plug-in for both Lightroom and Photoshop. Now let's talk about Luminar as a potential replacement for Lightroom. As I mentioned, there's always a high level of interest among my audience in getting away from the Adobe monthly subscription plan. And Luminar, as an inexpensive program that you buy once and then own forever, looks very appealing as an alternative. Now, the current version of Luminar is the first version to include a catalog for organizing, rating, and sorting your photos. Previous versions were just a simple photo editor with no real catalog. So, as you can probably imagine, Luminar as a photo organizer is under very rapid development. They're trying hard to catch up with Lightroom on that front. And while Luminar currently has some shortcomings compared to Lightroom as an organizer, I suspect they'll make very rapid progress. You can even go to the Luminar website and take a look at what they call the roadmap of progress, and you can see what they've got planned for future developments. And there's quite a lot of stuff here, especially related to the catalog, and you can see they even have a Lightroom migration tool planned further down the line, so I look forward to that. All right, so let's talk about how Luminar currently compares to Lightroom. As we've seen, Luminar is a very powerful photo editor. It can even do some things that Lightroom can't do with some of its sophisticated effects and its ability to use layers, for example. On the other hand, it can't do some things that Lightroom can do, at least for now. For example, at present, I didn't find anything in Luminar like Lightroom's automated upright feature that automatically straightens perspective lines in your photos. And there are some other more obscure or advanced Lightroom features that Luminar can't do. But to be honest, it seems like about 99% of the editing that I do in Lightroom, I can do in Luminar, plus some additional things that only Luminar can do. So as a photo editor, I think Luminar is a very strong competitor for Lightroom and even superior in some ways. However, Luminar currently has some shortcomings when it comes to organizing your photos. For example, Luminar, at least right now, does not have the ability to add keywords or to search your photos by keyword, although they say that feature is coming in a future version. It also doesn't do geotagging or IPTC metadata or some of the other fancy organizing stuff that you can do in Lightroom. But to be honest, I don't use those features myself, and Luminar plans to roll out all of those in future versions. What Luminar does do very well right now is very similar to what you can do in Lightroom with star ratings and color labels for your photos. For example, if I want to rate some of these photos, I'll take this photo, I'll do the first one by showing you instead of using the keyboard, I'll set the rating to five stars on that one. Now the next one I'm just going to use the keyboard. I'll type four to give that four stars, this one I'll give three stars, this one I'll give three stars, this one I'll give five stars. Now, if I wanted to filter or sort the photos, I can go up here where it says showing all photos and change that to, let's say I'll do four stars or more. So now I'm only seeing the ones that have a four star rating or higher. And I can also use it to sort them. Let me go back to all photos. And then instead of sorting them by capture time, I could sort them by rating 
and I'll switch to uh, descending. And now those that I sorted or rated are right up here at the top. Now you can also do the same kind of thing you can do in Lightroom with color labels. So let me pick this photo and I will say set a color label red and I'll pick this one and say set the color label yellow and then I could go up and say uh, only show me the red photos and then I've just got that one. So this is all very similar to Lightroom and if you took my Lightroom course you know I use the star ratings and the color labels in my own rating system so this is very suitable to me. Now let's take a look at the library panel. What Luminar does when you point it to a folder containing photos is simply make a direct map of all the photos in that folder and any subfolders in their current location. You can see here I pointed it to this master folder of mine called Photos that contains 81,000 plus some photos and it made a direct map of that plus all its subfolders. Now if you move a photo on your hard drive it moves in Luminar. If you move one in Luminar it moves on your hard drive. So it's very simple to understand. Now one little quirk of their current system is that there's no way to exclude a subfolder from this mapping. Let's say I didn't want Luminar to index this little folder here called iPhone MISC 2017. There's no way to say right click on that and tell it to just ignore that folder. You can delete it but then it would delete the photos and I don't want to do that. So the only way to get it to ignore a particular subfolder and not index it would be to physically move that folder outside of the parent folder that you had Luminar index. Now that's kind of annoying, but the developers tell me they're working on a fix for that so that you can exclude subfolders the way you can in Lightroom. Luminar gives you the ability to create albums, which is what we would call a collection in Lightroom. An album is a virtual collection of photos, a container for a group of photos that you're currently working on. You can see here that I made a little album called Japan for this demo with some of my Japan photos in it. These albums work just like collections in Lightroom. Luminar gives you the ability to create multiple catalogs just like Lightroom does. So maybe it's a bit silly to do what I did here by pointing Luminar to my master photos folder which has over 81,000 photos in it. That's a bit unwieldy and it's probably more photos than I need to have open at any one time. So what I probably should have done is just made a mini catalog of the photos that I want to work on. So for example, I could have gone to File, Catalog, New Catalog, and I could call it Japan Trip. And now once I've got this catalog created, I can go to the folders, click on the little plus, and I could take it to the folder from that Japan trip. And I could just put that folder in there. And then once it makes its thumbnails, I'll have a folder containing just that set of photos. So now you can see this little catalog contains only 5,000 photos instead of 80,000 photos, which seems like a more reasonable number. You can make any number of catalogs in Luminar that you like. And by the way, one thing I like about the library in Luminar is that you have two options for the way to view it. Now the default view which I normally pick is by having the folder tree exposed like we see here. But if you pick on all photos up here, you get a view that's sorted by time, the time when the photos were taken. So let's say I wanted to drill down to that same Japan trip this way, I can see which photos are taken on which particular day. For example, here's all the photos taken on Wednesday, October 22nd. So that's kind of cool as an alternate view. So that's a little overview of how Luminar works and how it compares to Lightroom. I really like working with Luminar. I love using it to quickly edit photos with the artificial intelligence filters and the looks, and I think Luminar has the potential to grow into a serious Lightroom competitor. So I encourage you to download Luminar and see how you like it. If you're looking for a Lightroom replacement, you might find that it does everything you need. And even if you think the current version of Luminar is not quite ready for prime time as a full-fledged photo organizer, you could download and explore it now so when they do finish building out the more advanced catalog features, including that Lightroom migration tool, well then you'd be ready to make the switch. Now on the other hand, if you're like me and you think you'll be using Lightroom for a very long time yet, you should definitely check out Luminar as a supplement or even as a replacement for parts of your Lightroom workflow. I'm starting to get really addicted to the Luminar AI filters and the looks for quickly editing my photos. And as you've seen, it's very easy to work with both programs together. 
So as I mentioned, I put a link with a discount code down below this video to save you a few bucks if you want to give Luminar a try. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll talk to you again soon.